Greetings, greetings one and all. It's a pleasure to be in your space yet another time for your favorite Bible study program, Bible Beyond the Basics. I'm your host, Dr. Clinton Baldwin. I'm here with co-host, Pastor Moses Marsh. And in a few moments, we will be getting into a very, very interesting Bible study engagement. But just want to let you know that Bible Beyond the Basics is brought to you by Dikayuma Ministries International. And our physical location is at 66A Brunswick Avenue in Spanish Town, Jamaica. However, you may join us on Facebook as well, Instagram, YouTube, dikayoma.com our website d-i-k-a-i-o-m-a.com or you can also reach out to us by whatsapp 240-878-0953 or 876-326-7782 or 876-287-9598 I'll let you know that in a few weeks, we will be broadcasting on a special podcast station. So listen out for our podcast uh, broadcast of these programs will be happening in just a few weeks time. We will give you further details where that is concerned. But there are many, many avenues in which you can access Bible Beyond the Basics. And we invite you to share the link, share the word with a friend, like our program on YouTube. And of course, visit us on Facebook, subscribe as well. We are happy to have you as part of the family. This week, Pastor Moses Marsh, as usual, my co-host is here with me, and I take it that you are doing fine, Pastor? Yes, Dr. Baldwin. God has been good to me and the family, so God be praised. (laughs) Wonderful, wonderful. We have been discussing the textual context of the Bible. And we would like to continue that study one more time. And as we go through, we will rehearse some things we did and look at some practical implications and blessings. You know, the Bible is a very, very important book. And thank God for this book. However, What we are coming to understand and see and realize, Pastor, is that the Bible is a means to an end, you know, not an end in itself. In other words, the Bible points away from itself to a person, Jesus Christ. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because, and listen to this now, the Bible, Pastor Moses, Is not a perfect book. Mm, It's not a perfect book. Not a perfect book. Are we saying the Bible is not important? Not at all. Certainly not. It is important, huh? Yes. But in and of itself is not a perfect book. But we're not perfect people either. So we may not necessarily need a perfect book book for our salvation what we need is a perfect person and god has given us such in jesus christ we are coming to realize that the book is not perfect because as was discussed the very first copies of the of all the books of the bible were written by hand were copied by hand, scribes writing one word, one letter at a time, and in the process, they made mistakes. We have the manuscripts, 20 odd thousand where the New Testament is concerned, maybe six, seven, eight thousand plus where the Old Testament is concerned. And we can see the mistakes, the variant readings, in these manuscripts. Now, some people are very alarmed by that, Pastor Moses, but we ought not to be alarmed. It is 
helping us. Let's do the positive side to see is that a perfect book. However, it points to a perfect person. And as such, we have a responsibility to do diligent study of the word. Because unless we do diligent study, then we can chip up ourselves in this. Pastor, do you have anything to say on this point at so far? Yes. Um, you made a very important point, Dr. Baldwin, about the Bible pointing away from itself mm -hmm. to someone or somebody, right? Yes. When Jesus was on earth, that's the same thing that he taught. We see in St. John chapter 5, verse 39, when mm -hmm. Jesus was talking to, to the Jewish leaders, he said, mm -hmm. you search the scriptures, for in them right. you think you have eternal life, but these are they which testify of me. Mm -hmm. So Jesus made a point that the scriptures point to him. Yes. Uh, yeah, very important. Very, very important. And the scriptures then, of course, were the Old Testament books, huh? Yes. not the books that we now have. So indeed, just was saying that as we look at the Bible, we discovered in our last presentation that there are hundreds of thousands of variant readings and uh, it is important that we are aware of these because they affect our lives. The last time we looked at the variant readings having to do with divorce and remarriage, huh? Yes. And uh, we made some points where that is concerned. Let me just uh, rehearse briefly the, the issues there, then we can look at the practical implications again, Pastor. Jesus made some statements recorded in Mark 10, 11 and 12, Matthew 5, 19 and 32, Luke 16, 18. As the scribes copied the manuscripts over the centuries, we see in them copied manuscripts approximately four, maybe more, different renditions of Mark 10, another four of Mark of Matthew 5, 1932, and another nine renditions of Luke 16. And we discovered that all of these renditions are different. The revealing number of things which have practical implications. To begin with, Matthew and Mark and Luke, they have Jesus saying different things, Pastor. Yes. And then when the scribes copied them, we have another layer of variety of differences in the texts. What is that saying to us? What can we learn? What are the lessons, Pastor? Very important lessons there, especially in particular with divorce and you know remarriage. Uh, yes. We cannot be dogmatic and say that there should absolutely be no divorce, or right. if there is divorce, there can only be divorce on the grounds of you know fornication. Mm -hmm. We cannot be dogmatic. We will have mm -hmm. to realize that, listen, what Jesus is saying, the main thing that he was saying was the ideal mm, is that marriage should last mm -hmm. forever until death. That's the ideal. Right. However, as to the exceptions to that ideal, mm -hmm. we will have to take each case on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. Because if we do, if we are dogmatic, what mm -hmm. we will be doing is that we are trapping people within loveless marriages. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And so these, these variants, Dr. Baldwin, really teach us we can't be dogmatic, we can't be restrictive on God's people to say that only one exception, fornication, um, for divorce and remarriage. Exactly. The, 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 the point is, you know, <laughs> is that the Bible writers themselves were not being dogmatic on the issue. Hmm. Yes. And the, the, as the Bible was copied and recopied, the church at different times throughout its history was also not being dogmatic because there were different renditions. And when we look into the, the, the different renditions of the text, there are different bases, different definition of what constituted adultery, different reasons for divorce. As a matter of fact, compare Mark's rendition and Matthew's renditions and that of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Matthew gave one particular uh, exception for divorce, that is fornication. Mark did not give that. Mark had no exception. Matthew allowed only the man to divorce the woman per se. Mark, both men and women could divorce each other. They were being flexible. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 had a different grounds for divorce. Point we're making is that the Bible writers were being flexible. They were going by the Spirit. And later on, as the text was copied, there are different grounds and reasons and definitions for divorce, for marriage, etc. They were being flexible. Are we here advocating divorce? No. <laughs> Not at all. What we are advocating is common sense, love, practicality. Because as you said, Pastor, there are many people who are trapped in loveless marriages. There are people who are trapped in dire situations. And there are also people who are jumping out of marriages unnecessarily. Yes. Because that, for example, fornication may occur within the relationship does not necessarily mean you have to divorce. You can forgive yeah. and continue. Mm. Huh? Yeah. So what we're saying is that the Bible ought to be used well. It's a very good book, but unless we can use it intelligently, it can be detrimental to our health, so to speak, huh? There are others, for example, we looked at the text having to do with the Trinity, First John 5. What did we discover on that again, Pastor? Could you relate, just rehearse that for us, Peter? Uh, the one on the, the Trinity, First, mm -hmm. First John chapter 5. Yes. What we realize is that in that text, mm -hmm. as the only text in the Bible where the Trinity is explicitly identify uh, mm -hmm. first john chapter 5 verses 7 and yes. 8 for there are three that we are witness in heaven the father the word and the holy spirit and these three are one and there are three that we are witness on earth the spirit the water and the blood and these three agree as one and what we realize when we look at the manuscripts is that the earlier manuscripts did not have the latter part of verse 7 and the first part of verse 8. That mm -hmm. was a later insertion, right? That came in very, very late, right? Hundreds of years later, mm -hmm. right? So when you, when you look at the text, what it should actually read, it should be read this way. For there are three that bear witness, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. So there's no mention originally of the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three being one. That was a later addition to the text. Exactly. Yes. Having this knowledge of readings like this, 
will save us from some needless theological controversies, huh? Yes. And will cause us to love people more. There are many, many of there are dozens of other variant readings like this that we can look at that are there. So we are encouraging the critical, discriminating study of the Bible so that we can be more practical in our Christianity. We're going to take a short break at this time, and we will be right back to continue this study. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. We continue the conversation on the textual variances of scripture. And we thank you for staying with us. This is Bible Beyond the Basics brought to you by Dikayuma Ministries International. Please remember to visit us on Facebook on our website, D-I-K-A-I-O-M-A dot com. Or please visit us at our physical location, 66A Brunswick Avenue in Spanish Town, Jamaica. Those of you who are in that vicinity, we have worship services on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on Wednesday evenings at on Zoom, 7 p.m. And also every other Sunday morning, we have a very, very special and scintillating Bible study that you would like to join in. In a moment, I will give you the Zoom link. Thank you for staying with us, Pastor. We continue the conversation. And before, we were making the point that there are many, many variant readings in the biblical text. And by the way, we've been given illustrations and examples mostly from the New Testament. But the same thing applies for the Old Testament. A very important point that we need to reiterate, Pastor, listeners, is that as we look at these variant readings, these scribal errors, uh, none of the original manuscripts, the very first copies of any biblical book is available today. And that's what makes, you know, the situation so necessary and uh, demands some effort. Because if we had the originals, then it will not be a problem. However, what we have are copies of copies of copies, and all of these copies are hundreds of years removed from the original. Where the New Testament is concerned, the first copy of copy of copy of copy of copies that we had is about a hundred plus years after the books were written. And for the Old Testament, my God, it is much worse than that. Hundreds of years. The earliest copies that we have of the Old Testament so far are the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are second, the Dead Sea Scrolls date from second, third century BC. But the books of the Old Testament were written from around the 10th century. Mm, so 600 years, the first copies. In the interim, many copies were made. What is this saying to us? This is saying to us, brothers and sisters, that we got to learn to look beyond the book to Jesus, or put it another way, use the book as a means to an end. Very, very important because what we have in many Christian circles, Pastor, is what you know, some of my friends call biblicism, where the Bible is worshipped instead of Jesus. Hmm? Wow. And when we see these things, we got to realize, okay, uh, let's look at how briefly how the readings, hmm, maybe the technical term now, how the literal words of the Bible are determined, so to speak, in light of the fact that they are variant readings. Yes. How are the literal words determined? So here you are. You have, uh, say, a dozen manuscripts written not in English, but in, let's say, Greek or Hebrew. They are all different. One manuscript is saying X at a point the, another manuscript at the same place is saying why. 
And then yet another manuscript is saying A, B, C. So what was written at that particular point in the text? Textual scholars over the years have been using different criteria. And we're going to give some basic ones now as to how they determine the earliest, what we call the earliest originals. And it's very, very important because later on, this is going to segue us into versions, modern versions. So let's just do, just do this little background work, get a peep into how variants are or readings are, deter are selected, and uh, then uh, we can do some examples and uh, push on. Okay, Pastor, you want to come in just here and give one or two of the criteria to determine how we choose uh, what the words in the Bible? Yes, definitely not. I am saying this thing cautiously because, you know, I know this can be very disturbing to some people. But please, go ahead with some of the, the, the criteria. And if you're disturbed, that gives you a chance to give us a call so we can clarify some of the things we say. Yes, they are disturbing, but they are truth. Go ahead, Pastor. Yes. So it's good to know that, that the scholars have some scientific Mm -hmm. you know, criteria by which they are working. So, so, so it's not just men coming together to, 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 and just, you know, randomly choosing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what they think or what they right. want to be in the text. So, mm -hmm. uh, one of the criteria, for example, is that you select a reading from the earlier manuscripts. So manuscripts have been written and we have some that are later than others, some that are earlier mm -hmm. than others. So we choose the ones from the earlier manuscripts, mm -hmm. from the better manuscripts. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by better manuscripts? Well, <laughs> as, 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 as the scholars look at the manuscripts, Mm -hmm. and they go through them, for example, uh, they would begin to, 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 to group them, for example. And they would realize as they are studying these groups of manuscripts that, generally speaking, some groups are better. Uh, they are have a, have, a, have a better reading. More accurate. More accurate, less mistakes and all of that. More in keeping with the author's style. Ah, more in keeping thing. with the author's style, which is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they would choose from the better manuscripts. Mm -hmm. uh, they would also choose the reading that is more difficult because one of the important things to understand, Doc, and, mm -hmm. and many of our listeners perhaps um, would not know this, but mm -hmm. as the scribes copied the text they if, they would try to make the text simpler so if they right. saw something and they, they thought that it was too complex too complicated they would seek mm -hmm. to make it simpler they would seek in some cases to 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 Terrifying. really actually interpret it <laughs> yes mm -hmm. yes and we can look at john we can look at john five momentarily as an example ah Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so scholars go with the, 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 the more difficult reading. Mm -hmm. the more difficult mm -hmm. reading. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, there are many more oh. reading that can explain the rise of the other texts. Yes. Yes. If, if you have A and B reading, and you can see how A can be derived from B, but not B from A, then... Uh, you will go with A. Yes. To speak, huh? Definitely. And yeah, also we, we, we use the shorter reading as well. Yes. So just to list them, these are older readings. 
or the earlier readings, the readings closer to the time of writing. So for example, John wrote his gospel in AD 95. You have a manuscript, let's say dated AD 200, and it is saying X, that John wrote X. And then you have another manuscript that is dated AD 500. I'm giving a literal example, you know, 8,500. Then, uh, and that later manuscript is saying that John wrote Y in John 5, 3 and 4. Then you go with the manuscript dated AD 200. It is 200, uh, it, it, it is closer to the time when John wrote, as opposed to the manuscript dated AD 500, which would be 500 years later than. So the earlier readings, the more difficult readings, as you mentioned, the reading explains the rise of the others, but cannot be explained by them. Author style, reputation, and the whole thing is thrown into the mix and uh, from the scientific process and also the art, et cetera. And the things come into the mix. They determine the, 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 the best reading. Let's look at John 5. St. John 5, 3 and 4. Let's look at that one as quickly as we can, Pastor. And then we... Uh, just to illustrate the point, John 5, you want to read the first? Yes, yes. Doctor. And just, we, we just punch the point there again. That's right. So in John chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, it says, In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made. And whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever mm -hmm. disease he had. Yes. That's John 5, 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. And this is a very so, important text, Doc, when it comes on yes. to and readings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, because the the section the the, the second half of verse three, mm -hmm. waiting for the moving of the waters, an angel came waiting an angel. I'm sorry, waiting for the moving of the waters. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first stepped into the water was healed of what they had. The entire verse 4. The section having to do with the angel, the stirring of the water, that section was added first in uh, the margin of Codex Alexandrinus, 500 years after John wrote his book, the point is, John 5, verse 3, says a large multitude laid at the pool of Bethesda. The water was troubled. The scribe wondered what was happening here. And so verses 3b and 4, insert, it was inserted to ex give an explanation 500 years later, and then it came in the text. So as we determine what was the earliest original then, we would simply take verses 3 and skip down to verse 5. Yes. Hmm? Simple as that, because that would be the earliest reading, the shorter reading, the more difficult reading, etc. Very, very Important, very important in, in terms of understanding. Uh, there are many others as well. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 22. Yes. I <laughs> hmm? think we're running against time. Let me just quote this. Whoever is angry with his brother is in danger of the judgment. Yes. Whoever is angry with his brother. But people get angry all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so... Some 200 years later, plus, a scribe insert in the margin the one word, ekai. 
where is angry with his brother without a cause? Three words in English, one word in Greek, ekai, without a cause. And later on, a scribe moved that into the main text. And so we have in some versions, where is angry with his brother without a cause is in danger of the judgment. How are we the time, Pastor? Yes, so time is basically up. It's up. <laughs> okay. Let me just uh, take a little liberty here. The time is going fast, but let me just take a little liberty here by simply saying that we need not complain that scholars have been selecting and choosing these variant readings. Why? You have a coherent Bible you have been reading all along. And it is a product of this process that we are describing. Hmm? Yes. So there's no way you want to complain. You only have a coherent Bible because scholars have been selecting these readings and that's why the Bible flows so easily and smooth and we praise God for it. Let us continue to study. We are going to come, come back and look at modern versions focusing particularly on the King James Version and the debate surrounding that for our next study. So thank you so very much for being with us. Time is always our problem. We never had enough time, but I hope you learned something from this presentation and we look forward to you being with us. Please visit us online on Facebook, Instagram, and other places as we continue to tell the word. Until next week, God bless. Take care for now. Bye-bye. Thank you for following today's broadcast brought to you courtesy of Tikayoma Ministries International. You can follow us on Facebook at Dikayoma Ministries International or on YouTube at Clinton Baldwin. Make sure to like our Facebook page today so you can receive updates, ministry information, and to be able to view future broadcasts. On behalf of Senior Pastor Dr. Clinton Baldwin and the team at Dikayoma Ministries, we wish you God's blessings and look forward to having you next time.